Hello, I'm Thomas Carruthers. I'm Will Legator. And today will we continue our uh, block of, of Will, Farewell for Now, not really, but whatever. It's basically, you got to pick a load of movies. Um, I'm going to make a bold statement. Oof. I'm going to double check. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say yes. I think this is the best movie we've we're going we've talked about in the in or, and will talk about in this selection of 13 and it's probably my favorite depending on what day I watch Sherlock Holmes. I would agree with you there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Every magic trick consists of three parts or acts. The first part is called the pledge. Ladies and gentlemen, my first trick of the evening is one that involves considerable risk. The magician shows you something ordinary, a deck of cards, a bird, or a man. I'll perform this feat in a manner never before seen by yourselves or any other audience anywhere in the world. The second act is called the turn. The magician makes this ordinary something do something extraordinary. That's it, Cutter. He simply disappears. That's not a trick. But he has to come back. There has to be a, a prestige. Exactly. And what is that film on? It's The Prestige. The wonderful Christopher Nolan is back again. He's back again, but for the first time with us. It, this is our first Christopher Nolan movie. Christopher Nolan, wow. Um, good one to start with. I need something impossible. Nothing is impossible, Mr. Angie. You're a magician, not a wizard. You've got to get your hands dirty if you're going to achieve the impossible. The real transported man is one of the most sought-after illusions in this business. The secret impresses no one. The trick you use it for is everything. Oh, people actually believe the things I did on stage, they wouldn't clap and scream. He's a no-talent magician, and they're calling him the bloody best in England. Why? It won't bring your life back. I don't care about my wife. I care about his secret. It's an excellent one to start with. Uh, uh, we're both big Batman guys. I, I, I've penciled in some stuff for the coming schedules, and I do want to finally get down to brass tacks Batman-wise. <laughs> Um, and that I, does uh, include watching the Joel Schumacher movies for the first time since I was a very small child, which <laughs> may be terrible and may be good. No, I, I um, yeah, I was hungry for more, Nolan, as soon as I finished Prestige uh, when I watched it yesterday. So I watched Dark Knight straight after. <laughs> it's very rare to see real magic. We don't do any tricks we can't control. This was built by a wizard, a man who can actually do what magicians pretend to do. It's great. God. <laughs> Just that night is one of those movies, and it's a I, I, I call it like a pulp fiction movie, where like when you're not watching it, it's like, oh, is that night that good? Like, is it actually as good as it's made out to be? And then apart from his weird trip to Tokyo. <laughs> and um, what's his what's it, Lao? I'm afraid I yeah. cannot trust you with the money. It's already in transit. Um, ha, has to, has to ha, set up the ha 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this isn't the Dark Knight podcast, but you you you've got best 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 Dark Knight Joker moment. I don't want to say best Dark Knight moment. Um, I, I, it's got to be. Um, let's not 
blow the sound of the motion and he just, just took it on and go. That one's good. That's that's also the same exact same vein of um poor choice of words. <laughs> I'm also a big fan of before that. Are you gonna love me? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a big defender of Bale and the Batman voice. I I anyway, anyway. I think um, it's great. I just it yeah. takes getting used to. But you, it, I, you watched the interview um, where Nolan was um, casting both um, Killian Murphy. Murphy and, yeah, and he was like, Killian Murphy got him spot on as Bruce Wayne. But um, Bale realised he's going to have to disguise his voice. <laughs> I don't know where an <laughs> It's not as good as my um, Aradeca on the floor of the gasoline. Rachel! Rachel! <laughs> Rachel! <laughs> that one's good. Why'd you save me? Why, Rachel! Um, big fan of that. Oh, Harvey, I just want to say, I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Incredible. I, incredible I also film. Like, um, at, at the end of that scene where he's like, I, I just wanted my phone call. <laughs> I just wanted my phone call. It's great. Uh, got it. Uh, great, 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 great movie. Gary Oldman <laughs> pretending to be dead, coming back to his wife. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. had to keep you safe. <laughs> we got you, you son of a bitch. Um, I want to see his wife's reaction when um, they, we find out that it's actually his son that he cares about more than her. <laughs> that, that man saved me. Well, actually, this time, I saved him. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. It's great, great. Stuff. Are they divorced in Dark Knight Rises, or not? I don't know. I think because he's in hospital for a while, because it's just him and Joseph Gordon-Levitt who don't get trapped down in the caves. Yeah. Anyway, another about that, the Prestige. <laughs> um, I think everybody's journey with the Prestige is the same. I don't want to be redundant. I think on a first watch, you go, that's the stupidest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. And then you keep watching it and you go, oh, no, this is a movie about obsession to such an extent that a man will literally come up with a time tr- with a teleportation device just to be good at a magic trick. And um, I think once you know, where, same thing with um, with Parasite. And um, I, I on a first watch, I don't know if you've watched Parasite yet, Will. I've not, I've not. No, there's a big sort of shift after the first hour and a half. And on the first watch, it didn't really work for me. But then when you return to it and you sort of know where it's going, I had a lot of people, we've talked about this before with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, lots of people are enjoying Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on a second and a third watch, Mm. knowing where it's going. Um, And knowing the history helps uh, (laughs) in in that case. But um, this, I feel, is one of those where um, knowing that we're going to get into the world of David Bowie and the imagination, then I think we're in a better place. Yeah. Do you remember, Will, the hot race in 2006 of this versus The Illusionist? I do, I do. I remember this was a big thing at the time. Now, do you want to know where my family sat on this debate? And still sit on this debate. Well, the fact that you you already distance yourself from your family, I think they were on the side of the illusionist. I don't. I, they absolutely. And I love the right. Here's the thing. I don't want to say I love the illusionist because I loved it a lot as a kid and would watch that DVD like all the time. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do a rewatch of the illusionist, and hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's still good. I like. I can still remember the ending. I, yeah, and I like. I watched great. it so many times as a kid. And the orange tree and and um, and the music. And I mean, it's got my main man Rufus Sewell in it. Uh, Lord knows I love a <laughs> love Rufus Sewell. When are we doing Mask of Zorro? He's not in Mask of Zorro. He's in Legend of Zorro. But uh, we could do it now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Colonel Crown Prince Leopold. Um. No, I, I do remember greatly enjoying uh, The Illusionist. Both were nominated for Best Cinematography, which we're going to get to in Oscar mm-hmm. Travesty. 
But um, what's your relationship with the prestige? Did you, have, am I being completely redundant or did you have the experience I've just described? Oh, no, I, I, uh, uh, I think I enjoyed it more than most people would because um, I'm a filmy uh, and so I watched it and I, I got it more than the person coming outside would watch it uh, without blowing my own trumpet too much. But, um, and also I, I it's got the perfect casting for me and it's perfect directors. Yeah. So I enjoyed everything about it first time around. I, it must have been college. I watched it, I think, when I started getting into movies more because I felt um, I had to compete with you. Oh, well, well, yes. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I too uh, greatly enjoyed um, The Prestige from, from a first watch. Uh, I... Mm, no, it's probably Dark Knight. I, I, it's probably not this. It's prob Dark Knight I, I is probably Dark Knight. I do always say Prestige is my favourite Nolan, but then, then you watch Dark Knight. Knight. It, it, it's, it's Dark Knight. So, uh, it's Heat, but with Batman and the Joker. I mean, <laughs> how do you get better than that? <laughs> it's heat. Um, the, okay, the Prestige. Let's talk about money. Did it make any money? It did make money. 40 million budget, 109.7 million box office. So it did quite well for what it was uh, um, you know really uh, positive reviews according to uh, Wikitive, uh, Wikitivepedia Wikipedia um, yes uh, which took, but however and let's do some YouTube comments let's see what uh, let's see what the kids are saying um, this is technically Batman versus Wolverine one of my favourite films of all time absolutely amazing and I'm not even a Nolan fanboy even Christopher Nolan can't recreate this magic. Can he? Did he? Has he? Uh, 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 uh. Dark Knight is after this. Ah, uh, well, yeah. I mean, are we are we are we now embarking on a larger Nolan? I think we should have a larger Nolan conversation. So, Memento, are you a yeah. Memento fan? Will I enjoy Memento? I like Memento a lot. Yes. Um, Insomnia, I'm a big fan of Pacino and uh, Robin Williams. Very, very good. Um, obviously, we just talked about the Dark Knight trilogy. For me, I've not been a well, no, I would still say I'm a fan. Inception didn't really do anything for me and hasn't done anything for me on my watch. I don't think Inception has aged very well. Mm. I um, think when it gets I like, into I like its. It Camp James Bond Tom Hardy. That's, well, that's the best very bit, good. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to dream of a little bigger, darling. Um, but then it also gets in, and Nolan's exceptionally good at large set pieces. And so just when he when he gets to make his Bond movie uh, in in yeah. the uh, snow scene in the in the fortress, that is just excellent. Yeah, it's great. Um, and and the world is interesting, and you know, um, you, I I don't like the lift. And the and the hiding the the wife. I, I think it's all a bit. No, you jump, I jump. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, not a big fan of marrying yeah. Tilly in that movie. She gets a bit shafted. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, wasn't she called like Matilda? Matilda. Have I pulled no. that? No, no, not Matilda. Mal, that was it. Mal, Mal. <laughs> Mal. <laughs> Pete Postlethwaite, yeah, Pete Postlethwaite was in it for like two seconds. Ken Watanabe. Um, Interstellar, again, haven't thought about that since watching it for once. Dunkirk, I was underwhelmed by light, light, long stretches of Dunkirk, but I thought that the changing of time and, and the using the usage of that was completely superfluous and unnecessary. I, and also, we all know how terrible the uh, Mark Ryland's boat subplot is. Yeah. I think halfway through making that Nolan realised he couldn't do it. Mm. <laughs> well, it just I, doesn't make sense. This is yeah. Dunkirk. Like, there's been articles about it and I've read them and stuff. Dunkirk's like one of the first of his big time movies or whatever that mm. just actually doesn't work, the the, the timeline. Yeah. As, like the Empire podcast they were talking about and they were just going, yeah, it's really good and really clever, but like this is the first one that doesn't actually work. <laughs> uh, and then Tenet, I mean... I think I need to watch Tenet again. I think I'm going to give Tenet a second go. I, I enjoyed Tenet. Uh, I went to see it at, when it came out. I, I, it's actually one of my favourite Kenneth Branagh performances. I thought it was scary. Yeah. 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 
No, he's good. I will stuff your balls down your throat. Um, on a scale of, you know, an estimated guess, how many times do you think the phrase Russian oligarch was said during tennis? <laughs> I don't know. He's a Russian oligarch and he's trying. Um, and again, it was very Bondy. It was very spy. I believe yeah. my my whole review was based around the, the the fact of me saying I would much rather this have just been a spy movie than a time movie. But anyway. Oh, I, my favourite genre is time travel. So, yeah, you but your favourite time travel movie is <laughs> Back to the Future, a movie where it, the time travel gets you to one place and then it's a wacky rom-com. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not undermining your favourite genre. <laughs> um, this, this is all in caps. This one such film where Hugh Jackman's performance is easily overshadowed by the great actor Christian Bale. I'm going to have to disagree. Really? I think this is Jackman's show the whole way. I would have to disagree with you. Oh! oh. <laughs> I, I mean, this is coming up in my change. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it later. Um, Do you not like Jackman in this? I, I adore Jackman in this, and I, I, I adore you, him in everything. Like but, this, I, this, this watch, I was like, oh, no, this is the best thing he's ever done. I mean, Logan's excellent. But this is like, and yeah, we all love Root. You know, that's very funny and that's wonderful and that's a great 10-minute stretch. But not just that, I think I think the dynamic of, Al, of Algier is, uh, is... Oh, yeah, no, I, yeah. It probably is the best thing he's done. Uh, it's yeah. just just Hugh Jackmanisms <laughs> are not made for screen. Uh, I'll, I'll do it now. Okay, I'll do go it now. It's, um, he, he He's a theatre actor. Um, and he, yes. It's like it's the little things where he's like where he steps into the electricity and he starts violently shaking. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I watched Basic Instinct last night, and and <laughs> it was the equivalent of Michael Douglas's Ope. Um, uh, but also, you're saying all of this doesn't that make Algiers the best role he could ever play? Oh yeah, oh, showman. Yeah. You know, like Algiers uh, is the greatest show. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, don't even do it. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Katrina Unit One Star Review Corner. Predictable and contrived. I think you can call it a lot of things, but it's definitely not predictable. Um, the movie itself, while very stylish and pretty to look at, felt forced. It lacks the smooth illusionist's quality that allows one to suspend disbelief and be deceived or dive in and accepts the illusion. The costume, set, and scenery are an excellent job there. What else we got? Um, dark, depressing, plodding, ponderous, and unbelievably dull. I much preferred The Illusionist, as that film at least oh. had likeable characters a viewer could hope would prevail in the end. I've seen The Prestige twice now, and I think even less of it after a second viewing. So somebody disagrees with this. I, I I I detest the term likable characters. I think it, you should say interesting characters. Oh. Uh, characters or, or three dimensional characters, characters. <laughs> rather than likable. Because some because sometimes you're not meant to like a character, but they could be, be intriguing, interesting, and three dimensional. Yeah, they go, that's, that's Mr. Don Draper. The year, the I, I do like the, the age of the anti-hero, like that. You know, Tony Soprano brought it on, and uh, we've you know we've gone from there, and and, and yeah, uh, one of the worst movies ever. It's the longest movie I've ever sat through. It must have been nine or ten hours at least. Nothing interesting <laughs> happens, and then that reveal is even dumber than you could ever imagine. Uh, not that you wouldn't see it coming at least thirty minutes ahead. It's just that you would hope that it's not that stupid. <laughs> oh, it, this is, I remember now why I saved it. Uh, anybody that loves movies should stay away from this crap. I'm just glad I didn't pay to see it, but I'm sad about wasting a couple, hour, a couple of hours. Save yours. Go see anything else. Avoid at all costs. It's worse than Al-Qaeda. Yeah. <laughs> That was a bigger plot twist than uh, anything in The Prestige. <laughs> Worst script ever. Wow. Only the performance of the actors is awesome. Here we go. Let's see if we can answer any of these questions. But I have to just ask yourself, if the machine was able to produce clones, why Robert Angier was killed? 
what? And he also was betrayed without any reason by two people, his assistant Olivia and his friend Cutter. Mm, no, we, the Olivia stuff makes sense and back and forth and she falls, he falls for sure, they fall in love with Brad, you know, Borden or, or you know. Um, does anybody want to explain why? Uh, this is more fiction than that Tesla machine. Friends usually do not betray with no reason. I did not enjoy this movie because of a huge lack of common sense. Right. I'm going to shut my window. <laughs> because I don't think my neighbour wants to join in on my prestige podcast. Um, back off, back off. Very, very broad Southern voice I now have to listen to all the time. Will, um, we, let's get into the body of the... What, what coffee are you drinking for our video listeners? I, am I allowed to do product placement? We're not sponsored. This is We're not sponsored. Pizza. This is just a, a simple Starbucks cappuccino. Mm, nice, nice bit of cappuccino. And I'm drinking Sprite. Uh, let's get into the body of the film. Uh, ten minute stretch. Will, why don't you kick us off? Oh, it's a boring one today. I've gone opening and closing. Oh. Yes. Um, the opening is in, like, the Mark O'Kane uh, montage. Ma Michael Caine's voiceover, yeah. Any movie that begins with a voiceover of Michael Caine is great. And this also this has... Oh, go on. So I, I, I uh, watched this with my housemates last year, and their main... The reason why they marked it down was because of Michael Caine. Because they were like, Michael Caine is just the same in everything. And I watched it and it took me out of the film because I was like, that's just Michael Caine. And I don't, I don't like it. And I'm thinking he's one of the greatest actors of all time. How dare you? He is wonderful and charming. And they're not sing Zulu. <laughs> he's a completely different person in that. Uh, when he plays Mr. Zulu, he <laughs> um <Yeah>. Mr. Zulu. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I'm a huge Kane fan. Um, oh, yeah. Obviously, he wins his Oscar for Hannah and her sisters. And and The Side of House Rules, which is a fine film, but is very average. Uh, Hannah and her sisters is probably... Well, no. I, oh, go on. I would have liked an educating reader. Um, win. Yeah. Well, Ju well, it was a big thing at the time that Julie got nominated. Mm. She won the BAFTA. And she won the, and she won the Golden Globe, and she was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, I didn't expect to win. Uh, no, 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 he's excellent at educating me too. Uh, he's very, very good. Um, do it on radio. Uh, right, which takes us, oh yes, I, I'm, and then closing, when does your, because 10, 10 minute stretch means nothing. So when, when does your ending begin? Are we talking hanging and then into, into the reveal? Yeah. No, that is pretty glorious. Um, and I think that's, again, Jackman's best stuff. And he's crying and he's like talking about how great magic is. And it's just like, oh, you sad, sad man. <laughs> you lost your wife. You couldn't even, you got cooked by Christian Bale when you tried to get go for Scarlett Johansson. It, I, I always forget that like Scarlett Johansson is in this. Yeah. <laughs> and then she comes, hello, I'm a cooking thing. Hello. I, it's not that bad. I think it's a great accent, but it's, it's just because we know it's Scarlett Johansson. You know, it's, she's so uh, beautiful, and and you know, which is the opposite argument to Michael Caine. He's just using his his own voice. Yeah, but they're all heightened. Him and Christian Bale in oh, that first backstage scene. Yeah. Jesus Christ, back and forth. <laughs> He's doing old tricks. Do the do the Wingfield knot. Do the and they're going back and forth and back. If you <laughs> kiss your lady's leg again, and then. <laughs> That uh, backstage is uh, is is a, is a it's actually in uh, my best single minutes. I mean, I've ruined it's, it now. It's mine, mine too. Me too. <coughs> uh, I have some uh, different ten minute stretches. I have root and uh, the whole uh, that that business. Um, one minute, uh, yeah. Uh, I I have uh, the whole hiring root and 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 I think they do a, a good job, Jackman and the makeup where. He's just different enough. Like his nose is—is is that one of your changes, as well? It's in my change. It is I like put, I put how could you find it? Yeah, yeah uh, it's I I brush it aside when I watch it because um, I don't like to think about it too much. But I can I can understand 
it's justified with failed because they're twins at birth. Um, but this is, uh, oh, we need to find a double by tonight. Oh, yeah, I know a guy that looks exactly like you. <laughs> I think they needed to have the thing of like, like Gone Girl, where she like has to eat all the burgers. Like, I think, I think uh, Angia had to like get fatter or something, or, or, or like, I think the nose needed to be more obvious. And then like Christian Bell could have gone, and I really loved the bit where his nose got bigger uh, or something, <laughs> you know, something like that. Um, yeah, no, it is, it is, it is rough. And it, and it is, it is completely, but it does lead us to some of the funniest and... and oh, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I also have a 10-minute stretch of um, things going wrong with the, with the transported man of um, the back and forth of the first thing of him coming on drunk uh, like two minutes later uh, yeah. with one of my specific favourite parts where he does the face where he picks up the hat and goes, mm, <laughs> oh, sorry. And, uh, and then that leads straight into, that's back to back with um, uh, Bale removing the removing the bag and uh, the, the drop bag and he drop, bro- breaks his leg and, um, and then he goes up and, Oh, there's too much magic over here at the Pantages Theatre. And uh, yeah, glorious stuff. It's back and forth, rude, you know, violent magicians is just an incredible pitch. And the dueling journals, uh, which we get to, of course. And then I also similarly have the ending. Uh, But I also enjoyed before the ending and just that 10 minute stretch of defeat. Yes. with With the new machine. And Bale is just what 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 is this? How can it even be done? And it's just so sombre, and and sad, mm. and bad. But I also have um, a ten minute stretch of the birdcage, and then working the birdcage and getting into the birdcage, and we see how it works. It's in my change, but um, the. Yeah, them the doing it, and then it's going to go well, it's going to go well. There's the woman who looks a lot like an Benning, and then the fingers go down. And then <laughs> dead, another dead bird, gloriously uh, brutal. Um, I've got both of those dead birds in my specific favourite moments. I love how brutal they are, and the blood and the, the, and the good yeah. stuff. Mm. So that's it for your term of stretches, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which uh, takes us on to Tom's Wheeler's specific favourite part of the film. I've talked about a couple. I love the opening hats. I just love an image that sure? we have no idea what 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 on earth those are. And then by the end of it, obviously, it makes a load of tremendous sense. Um, which takes us into uh, Michael Caine's axe and watch. Uh, anytime he's doing the drowning cage and he gets his axe and he gets his watch and he just yeah, like, oh, no. oh no uh, at oh. the funeral you don't know you don't know, <laughs> you know that? i love i love i love it the the bullet catch underground like slummy slummy bar and somebody throws the bottle and he goes who threw that and there's the old and there's the woman who's like i did i did <laughs> um the first time we see uh the trick the Christian Bale bouncing ball trick. Yeah. It's great, great stuff. Michael loves it. He does. He's got, that is not the same person, but they've got two wardrobes. I, I want a movie where he, where he comes backstage and goes, I've got one question. Where'd you buy that wardrobe? It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the perfect place for it in my living. Great, I've got it. Um, the prestige materials. I want it. Lord Cadlow wants to buy the prestige materials. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I really want those wardrobes. I don't understand. And I will only I will only buy that wardrobe without its doors. <laughs> Does he get in without the door? And then and then the whole thing, he, he's talking to Hugh Jackman, and Hugh Jackman's going, How does he do it? And he's going, I don't understand. He must have measured them perfectly and got the same paint. He goes, not the, not the wardrobe, you imbecile. How could they look exactly the same? How could they do it? It's exactly the same obsession movie, but he thinks it's the wardrobe. I don't know. David Bowie, 
I have one piece of advice with these wardrobes. Destroy them. <laughs> oh, um. Da 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 da. The prestige. Uh, at your. Oh no, I've still. I've, I love Root going. Oh, I've played Faust. You don't think I can play the Great Danton? <laughs> um, enjoy that. Um, what does this say? He doesn't. So. He does try so hard. Oh, oh, uh, Christian Bale when he goes, oh, you've got a feel for him. He does try so hard. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's yeah. always good. The journal reveal uh, is obviously classic. And, um, and then, you know, I lied to you when I said about the uh, drowning. You said it was like going home. He said it was agony. <laughs> and just the, <laughs> the look on you, Jeff's face of, I'm <laughs> putting, like... I mean, we're going to talk about the hundred shows. I've got some oh, big yeah. problem, big problems <laughs> with that. Thank God he only got a week in, but um, it was agony. And uh, and and then the final end jar with Hugh Jackman's clone corpse is iconic. Love it, beautiful. Yeah. Um, your Will's with a specific favorite part of the film. Yeah, you know, a lot of it's been mentioned already, but just to reiterate, there's a bit. That uh, backstage argument, uh, when they buy the, um, for the, the birdcage trick, when they buy the theatre, mm. uh, and he's um, reassuring, Michael Caine's reassuring the, uh, the stage manager, and then he turns around and he just does a laugh. I love that laugh. <laughs> it's oh, great. Michael Caine. Um, well, I hope you're not hurt, planning on hurting this bird, Mr. Andrea. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> um, when uh, Bale comes up, um, to do the trick, uh, and that when he just smiles at him, and uh, he's like, oh, oh, "Oh, so what does he do there? He's just, just pricking the cage, and it's so flimsy because of all the stuff." Yeah, he just breaks the mechanism. Yeah, and he's done well, very well to know what the mechanism is. He's, he's a trained magician. Uh, the uh, when he handcuffs the guard, I think that's very that's fun. Scary, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very fun. I love the um, fake out with the bowl. Like, yeah. Oh. I mean, he does do a lot of fun playing. He's like, oh, oh my ball, my ball's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shit. Yo, shit, mate. He goes, oh, <laughs> yes. I meant to drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything else? Will? We, we could, we could riff an entire, we could riff a version of this movie for a, a whole two hours. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could have done the wardrobe gag for another 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to it's save something gag. for the sketches. <laughs> um, um, yeah, a bail coming out of the door, picking up the hat. And, hmm? It's great. <laughs> it is fun. Um, which takes us into Soundtrack Corner. Um, lovely, lovely soundtrack. But uh, let's talk about uh, Radiohead. Um, great. <laughs> Great, great closing track called Analyze. Yeah. I don't know that it's by Tom York or Radiohead, but um, glorious, lovely little track. And, and it doesn't technically fit or whatever, but it works. And obviously the yeah. lyrics and um, I can't remember. I think he approached Radiohead for a score one time. But I can't remember for what film it was. Obviously, are you a, what, what's your opinion on Spectrewill? Um, it's in what it's it's in my a powerful sense of dread playlist on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> it's all of the there's well there's all sorts of you've got withering. It's all of the songs have a powerful sense of dread. It's great. It's quite unnerving. What's that? Um, is that Peep Show? Yeah, I, I'm at the minute. All of my playlists are named after Peep Show. If you are you visiting my Spotify? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> is it Will Leggett or William Leggett? Uh, Will, I think. There yeah, browse, are, browse a powerful sense of dread. There's some great, and you've got the picture. Songs. Yeah, you've got <laughs> a powerful sense of dread. And these, these are Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. Yeah. Excellent choice, <laughs> uh, Paranoia. Android, uh, uh, Tom York. <laughs> oh, there's, oh, there's some good stuff in there. Uh, I think it's a... driving. 
Oh, yeah, that, that I just made that for a road trip to Manchester. This uh, is me. The, oh, that's uh, that is uh, five hours, 12 minutes. And that tells exactly the story of my entire college experience. Oh, well, that's nice. It's like an autobiography. Is it just in, like in song? Despacito. Uh, I was on that was the song of the year when we were on holiday. So it, it it's significant. I can if you we listen to it and when a song comes out, I can tell you exactly what I'm doing. There's even uh, one your... minute. Will I see that you have adopted my method of musically? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you've called it no, oh, no, I've no only Noah's Ark. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say you got two. Noah's Ark, two by two. Yeah. No, I definitely got it. <laughs> yeah. What uh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah, I can go with these choices. I can go. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, ooh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're both of my Moulin Rouge choices as well. Well, no, I also have, oh, I, right. but I, but I also have, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the it's scary. Uh, oh, bend and snap. Oh, wrong choice there. <laughs> I only want to say, if I could have the way, take this cup away from me. I, I often, <laughs> with the uh, friends who know of Jesus Christ Superstar, I often will. <laughs> Uh, go when they I don't know it's like there's a drink around or you take this cup away from me I don't want to taste its poison Philip and <laughs> Peter oh I, I'm a big fan of Jesus Christ Superstar the film actually I love it I have love you seen the film Christ. I have it's a very very good film good old Ted Neely yeah <laughs> yeah <fun. laughs> Yeah, fella, was I blind? Too much heaven. What's the bit where in heaven on the bus? No, 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 Listen, Jesus, to the warning I give. Please remember that I want us to lay. Oh, that's it. So come on, come on. He will listen to me. Ah, oh, listen, listen to me. Come on, listen to me. Ah, uh, big fan of big, big fan of. Uh, Carl Anderson in Heaven on Their Minds. Uh, the Prestige, uh, which takes us into Oscar Travesty. It actually did get nominated twice, Will. Uh, do you know what those two nominations are for? Cinematography. Yep, I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to say screenplay is too obvious, so I'm going to go for costume. I... Only one to see. <laughs> Let me. Uh, it, oh, it doesn't say. What a shit device. Uh, the Prestige, not The Illusionist. <laughs> the Prestige. Its second nomination was for art direction. So the sets. Yeah. So um, uh, cinematography. Uh, but yeah, by Wally Pfister. Um, wow. And The Illusionist by Dick Pope. Incredible <laughs> names. Both lost to uh, Pan's Labyrinth uh, when it ah. came to cinematography. So so deserve it, I feel, yeah. in, the, in the world of cinematography. Randy Newman's Our Town from Cars lost to I Need to Wake Up from An Inconvenient Truth. Um, where, where would you say nominations? So this was The Departed year, and everyone's always like, oh, The Departed shouldn't have won. It was just consolation. But as we... As we look, it is great. It's not only great, it definitely is the best film of that year. <laughs> Just because it's not Scorsese's best does not mean, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Would you so so you would have gone nominate, so you would have gone screenplay then? Oh, uh, yeah, I think screenplay. I this think it's a pretty of, um... great set of five screenplays, however. We've got Notes on a Scandal, excellent. What the fuck me, Barbara, Little Children, Children of Men, Borat. And the departed. I'm going to get rid of Borat. I, I would not say that's a screenplay because exactly. that's largely improvised. It's largely improvised. I would get rid of Borat and give the nomination to. Yes, but is the screenplay the best part of the Prestige? See, this is the thing. I think it's one of Nolan's stronger scripts. Yeah, him and Jonathan, Pat, brothers getting together. Making a movie, <laughs> movie. Uh, okay, we, we like to do this. You're a big animated fan. 
Happy Feet, Cars, Monster House. What won? What should have won? Monster House should have won. Mm -hmm. I adore Monster House. I'm going to say Cars won. Happy Feet won. Happy Feet. I'm, I never liked Happy Feet. It scared, it scared me. It was just strange. And it, there's not much to it. The Wii game is great. The Wii game is fantastic. Um, we are one of the that's a, will, that's a will quote. I, I often say the Wii game is great. No, that it's just weird, weird animation. Robin Williams is great and it is the best part. Um, but it's it's quite creepy and it's a weird story. It doesn't really go anywhere. And I'm not a big fan of the singing and the dancing. Mm. Well, there we go. Yeah. There um, you go. Anything else you want to look at when it comes to Oscars, Will? Um, who won? Um, best hair and makeup that year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, right, right. no, no, ladies, yeah. Um, let me get it up. See first. No, no it doesn't see. There we are. No. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose my goddamn will to live in a bloody minute with the. There we are. Um, okay, best hair and makeup was oh, best makeup design they didn't include hair back then uh, mm -hmm. were oh Apocalypto was nominated Pan's Labyrinth won and the third nomination was for Click yay <laughs> uh, I would have I would have gone for it yeah but is it it's just Borden though isn't it and the rest is just like cheap wigs. No, he's got his fat suit. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's got, uh, they, I think they make um, Thingy look very good. What's he called? Root. Not Peter. Oh, no, in, um, no in, in Click. I'm on about Click. Oh, you're on about, oh, come on. <laughs> I knew it. Um, right. We're both Sleuth fans. Does is this the original or remake? There's only one. The um, are we in Inspector Doppler territory when it comes to Borden, or is it believe? Is it is it is it? But I can't even remember if I didn't see it on a first watch. I saw it straight away. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'd, I'd almost. I'd, I'm not sure. Is it pivotal? to the plot, to the twist, because it's more of a twist. I think the Hugh Jackman twist is, is the real twist. Mm. And I think um, Nolan wants you to work it out and know um, before the reveal in order to get you focusing on that. And then yeah, I think it's the, I think it's a, an intentional red herring. I think it's, it's yeah. well, he says it, doesn't it? The audience knows. The audience figures it all out. And I think it's that thing of, it, this is so obvious to everyone but Angeas. And Angeas will yeah. come up with a time and kill himself over and over again. And it's just so obvious. Yeah, um, yeah I think, because also, because he starts off in the shadows, but then by the end, like, he's, you can, like, there's yeah. close-up shots with him. And also, but I, I like the reveal about how they they both loved different people and they had to live their life. I think that's the, the nice part of the twist. Yeah. That you go, oh, right, wow. Yeah. And that's the sad part as well. Do you think uh, think uh, the guy who was in love with Scarlett Johnson ever had sex with Rebecca Hall? Think they had rules? Do you think they had rules? I'm sure they... Because like what? Well, so like yeah, but well, you you know you've been in a relationship. Sometimes your partner will come up to you and just like kiss you. I'm not saying it goes to sex every time, but like what do, what happens when Rebecca Cole comes up and's like, mm, mm, I love you, and lots of kissing on the lips. Does he always have to go get away, get away, move, no, get away, get away, please don't get kiss me. On. There are rules. <laughs> you keep talking about rules. Like I, I, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and imagine that you're you can't you want to get your rocks off with Scarlett Johansson so much that you make your your sister-in-law kill herself because she thinks that her husband's having an affair. 
you dog, you dog, Brandon, Borden, sorry, Alfred Borden. Brandon. <laughs> Brandon. Who's Brandon? Um, Franklin. Um, at what point does Michael Caine know? Uh, when he watches the trick. Yeah. Because from then on, it, it, yeah. But like, at well, what, what point does like Michael Christian Bell come into him? He's like, yeah, we're twins. We're twins. <laughs> We're, we're, we're twins, Mike. We're twins. Have you seen the movie Twins? It's a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why if they were twins? They didn't look. What if it was Thanos? One second, no, it'd be done. And they still cut their fingers off. We had to make them look together. We had to make it. Look. We had to make their fingers. <laughs> They're just not identical twins. <laughs> we had to try. It was good enough for us, but not for them. <laughs> Just imagine the whole love triangle with Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> she thinks that Danny DeVito is Harley. I, I always thought it would have been funny if Scarlett Johansson goes, I found this person who looks exactly like you. And it's just like a black fat guy. <laughs> it's like, this doesn't look like me at all. She goes, no, it looks exactly like you. <laughs> also, talking about being blind, so it's a blind guy that runs the operation downstairs. <laughs> so he, but how does one blind man manage to successfully wrap a cage with a dead man in it? Why does he bring a lantern around with him? <laughs> Who? Hugh Jackman in the end? No, the blind guy, he carries a lantern, doesn't he? Yeah, because then like, there's a weird bit where like they go, the blind man's down there. The blind man's down there. Does he not have a name? And also, like, at what point? So, cloned Hugh Jackman is just like as a is like he's walking up somewhere in yeah. like the higher ranks of the theatre. Does he then hear the screams and go, "Nah, leaving it. I'm going to leave it tonight." Because what happens if he reveals himself? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I'd always, why doesn't he just use the machine once and now he's got a double to do the acts with? Because you can't trust yourself. Because you can't mm, trust yeah. you can't trust him. Because he might kill him. Because he yeah. might kill him and they might and um and he might give away the trick or you can't have two people around. <laughs> yeah, no, he is uh, yeah. I mean, anyway. And also yeah. like where does how is there a science for where he shows up? Where he wakes up, yeah. Yeah. What? How do they know where he wakes up? Is it different every time? Obviously, it's not. All the hats go there, and obviously, it's got to be theatrically produced. But what poor woman who's just runs the minibar and has got her ice creams, and she's just waiting, she's on a bag break before the, before the opening, the, opening the doors for exit, and just in the middle of a corner of this theatre. <laughs> you don't want to be in this. <laughs> Bloody hell! Like, is have they bought, cornered off a place in the theatre? Did they do the test of like, okay, and how many times did they have to kill a huge a, a huge Jackman for um, them to figure out where he was going to land? Got lucky with the theatre as well. He didn't uh, wind up in the stalls. It, it, yeah. it was. <laughs> and also, is it like the fly? Like, if you transport into a place that somebody's already there, do you like morph with them and? Or like if he morphs in the middle of a wall or a tr any of those hats in trees. Yeah. I always, like there should have been a hat half morphed into a tree and David Bowie should have gone, you never know where they will show up. It's very dangerous. He goes, I'm, I'm willing to take the risk. I can click. <laughs> <laughs> I think Christopher Walken should have played the uh, Tesla role with the same hairstyle and Only character as Glenn. One more place where it's for them. <laughs> Mr. Edison... Definitely up my ass. <laughs> uh, which takes us into um, Will's favourite building our set. Speaking of Tesla. Oh, yeah. Good. The lovely breakfast balcony. Oh, yeah. The, the, bre the balcony is, is, is very nice. But I think as a, as a set piece, you, you can't argue with the, the grand reveal of the, the machine on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. I I think my personal favourite is Michael Caine's workshop. I like that. 
Very much. Well, we talked about this during uh, Inside Number Nine Misdirection episode, uh, talking about just the joys of all these little contraptions and the like. And no, it's very exciting and, uh, and, 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 it, and very, very interesting. I like the mundanity of it all. Yes. That this is just work and this is just business. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just their life. That's just their life. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just, that's just their life. It's just business and that is it. And it's as mundane as anything else going to work every day. It's a fine science. It's a science. No, no, that, no I'm doing that still in Skarsgård, but he's talking about murdering good. But it's a science of a thousand details. Lena, Lena, just another girl. Uh, which takes us into, I believe, if I'm not wrong, best single minute. Um, I have the I have the opening in single minutes of uh, the K uh, K talking back and forth. Don't know what's happening with all of these things. He's talking to the little girl. We have no idea what's happening. And I also enjoy um, is the first wife dying. And I'm going to name that actress Piper Perivo. Yes, and she yes. was also in Coyote Ugly. That's what I recognize. Oh, I love that film. Right. Big, big Coyote Ugly film. Yeah. Um, can't stop the can't fight the moonlight. No. Um, yes, poor Piper Perivo died, and obviously that colours the entire film. Yes, very sad. Very sad. Any best single minutes? For? I've gone for uh, shooting his finger off. Mm -hmm. The the bullet catch. I think that's a very good scene. Um, yeah. It's it's it's. Oh, it precedes him breaking the the bird cage. It's another one of them. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hold on a minute, and and he can't. Oh, ah, um, meeting Tesla mm -hmm. and having breakfast with Tesla. We haven't really talked much about David Bowie. Is David Bowie's in this? Is this David Bowie's best performance? Yes, I think so. Obviously, Zoolander's great. <laughs> I'm not a big uh, labyrinth <laughs> person. Well, Labyrinth, yeah, Labyrinth's its own thing, isn't it? Uh, I, I think, I'd say it's his best movie performance. I think his best performance is in, in extras. Little fat man. Yeah, that's glorious. Yeah, That's his best performance. Sad, sad little fat man. Uh, let me get his, his complete acting credits, because I don't think, I think there's few enough for us to actually just go, go through them <laughs> one by one. Uh, come on, come on. Obviously, he's, he's Pontius Pilate in Last Temptation of Christ, which he's great in. Like, just comes for one scene and is just excellent. Uh, Man Who Fell From Earth is obviously iconic. Uh, very good, very very bizarre and very, very good. Uh, lots of videos are ruining. Uh, the, oh, The Hunger. The Hunger's very good. With Susan Sarandon and Catherine Deneuve as... Um, they're all sexy vampires. Uh, that one's that one's very good. He was in three movies in 1983, as well as releasing Let's Dance and Oh My God and Modern Love and China Girl. He was all, he was in The Hunger, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, which is a very good movie about a, a POW camp. Um, and then his next film credits, Labyrinth, yeah, which is its own, which is its own thing, which uh, is fine. And then yes, Last Temptation of Christ. Into yeah, he always in. Of course, he's in Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. He's glorious in Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me for about ten minutes, and then he's David Bowie in Zoolander. I think I can I'll be of some assistance. Disqualified. <laughs> Is Zoolander the best Ben Stiller directed movie? Your nominations are Zoolander, Zoolander Two, The Cable Guy, Tropic Thunder, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I, I do love Cable Guy. Oh. I do love Cable Guy. Um, yeah, well, why not? Why not Zoolander? I mean, there are Zoolander, Tropic Thunder, and Cable Guy are the. Uh, and Secret Life of Water Mitty. I watched it all. The, yeah, I think it's. I, I really like that. And uh, Reality Bites is good as well, um, which takes us into Best Line. Best Line, Will. Why don't you kick us off? Um, What's he called? Hugh Jackman's double when he goes, and uh, what did I have this pleasure of uh, this welcome back beer? <laughs> and then he follows it with, 
That's great. Do you have anything to say? Abracadabra. Yeah, okay, abracadabra. That's a bit stupid, let, let's be honest. Abracadabra is your last words. Boopity boppity boo. Boopity boppity boo. He goes, busy, uh, busy. Uh, let's get busy. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words? The first part of the trick is the, it is just the whole <laughs> What would your last words be? My last words? Because it's a lot of pressure, isn't it? It is. Do you think, that, like, um, do you think like they do drafts before? I'm the Zodiac Killer. I, will, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred Borden. So we go alone now, both of us. Only I don't... This I actually think this is so on the nose and being bad. And it's just really well delivered by Bale. Only I don't have as far to go as you. You were right. I should have left him to his damn trick. I'm sorry about Sarah. I didn't mean to hurt her. I didn't. You go and live your life in full now, all right? You live for both of us. Goodbye. I think it's really well delivered. (laughs) You're familiar with the phrase, man's reach exceeds his grasp. It's a lie. Man's grasp exceeds his nerve. Mm. Lovely bit of bury there. Society (laughs) tolerates only one change at a time. Um... That's it for best lines. Any other best lines, Will? Uh, not off top of my head. Well, let's go to what's the change. There Will, we go. what's the change? Um, I, well, I've gone through two or three. My final one is the child who goes, he killed it. No, I thought he was lovely. Um, I, you know, he killed it. But where's his brother? His brother. He's no, a sharp, he, he's he a sharp lad. It. He's a sharp lad, your son. He's my nephew. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Let's play ball. Let's play ball. <laughs> Rebecca Hall, you minx. Uh, are you a big The Town fan, Will? No. Well, I've not seen it. Not seen it. Oh, right. <laughs> no, it's shit. Uh, great bit of ham. Great bit of uh, Ben Affleck. Very good. And Rebecca Hall's in it. And Pete Bosselthwaite doing an outrageous Irish Boston accent. It's wonderful. <laughs> Give it a taste. Give it a taste. Uh, great stuff. Love, love the town. Uh, which then, okay, I've got some plants in real magic shows. We'll talk about that first. That's stupid. Like, that's just like fake and copying out. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um... Have you yeah. ever been to like a magic show? I don't think I've never actually been to like I've done like the whole you know all inclusive hotel. They'll do an hour, but I've never actually yeah. paid for like a Darren Brown. I was about to say that. Oh, there right. was um, yeah, there was this one straight when we went to Portugal, and it wasn't um, you had sort of the uh, the mini disco uh, with the sort of the entertainment people, but then it was all strange entertainment from the hotel on a night and it was this magician and it went on for two hours and it was, it was weird. Now I, I'd like to, I'd like to go to Vegas and see Penn and Teller, I think. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, yeah, that would be good. Um, I never, yeah, Dynamo doesn't really do things anymore. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of um, close up street magic. No, I like the show. I like, I like the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. I do. I'm a big fan of Darren Brown, though. Um, with yeah. his, um, did you watch the uh, the um, art gallery heist one? That was my favourite. No, one. no. I think, that no, was... he's very good at what he does. And, 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 and I do find it very interesting. But if, I, if it was a choice of uh, a, a great trick in some side alley, uh, there's, there's very ominous. Or like a grand David Copperfield type show. Well, David Copperfield had to reveal one of his massive tricks in court because uh, um, somebody um, because somebody like tripped and broke their ankle on the like run. They have to run around the theatre, uh, the the guests that they pull up, and he had to like give the whole thing away in court. Um, and then ticket sales went down. Bloody David. Siegfried and Roy getting that tiger on stage. Backfired though, didn't it, Roy? Backfired. Uh, uh, funny Robin Williams joke. He said, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I thought that was something Siegfried and Roy do on holidays. Um, 
Yeah. And then the plants in this movie, like how on earth do they get picked every single time? Um, maybe the, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like Borden picking him in for the bullet catch and uh, <laughs> like, I, I, what, how, how do they get picked every single time? Like the amount of times that Christine Bell gets brought up at the Angiers show. No, don't, doesn't work for me. The cage arms are very obvious. Like, <laughs> Yes. Looks like looks like Wolverine. Like you would see what's ah. happening. You would see that they're <laughs> ducking in, and there's no I bet way he did that, that on catch. set. I, he probably did that, didn't he? He's wacky old Hugh. Oh. And also Angie going to prison. I don't care how small, how big the fucking mustache is. He says that's the man that that's the man that I don't yeah. care about Victorian prisons. There is somebody that goes one minute, one minute. Grab him for a moment or something. I don't care. I don't care. It's so bad. It doesn't make any sense at all. And also, why would he risk it? I know he likes to spit in his face and show him his daughter, but yeah. Also, um, Bale in prison just gives me big Dark Knight Rises vibes. It, it's the exact same layout. <laughs> yeah, needs needs Tom Conti. Hasa, hasa. <laughs> He, he, hasa, hasa, he, he, hasa, hasa. What is it? Um, they, we, we put Dark Knight Rises on the other day thinking it was Dark Knight because um, the, the programming got it wrong. They put Dark Knight with Heath Ledger on and it's, oh, it's, it's Tom Hardy in a plane. <laughs> but I would say I'm not watching this because it's just Why? after. After the movie, it's just him climbing out of a hole. Yeah. That is very good. But I want to be prepared for. If I put on and I go, I want to watch Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises comes on, I am disappointed. No, because every time I, I, I kind of have that feeling, but that's like dead now because I, I will, anytime that Dark Knight Rises, I, I will watch Dark Knight Rises. I'm, for me, it's Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins. <sighs> yeah. I want more Killian Murphy. Yeah. 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 Here he is. <laughs> that is very good. Um, which takes us, yeah, that's that's it for changes. And then I have some other changes in what's the question in Tom's big question, but oh, I've good. just called them questions. Um, which takes us then into uh, anything left from your notes, Will? No. Uh, I just commented Ricky Jay's cameo, wonderful magician who passed last year, um, star of Magnolia and Boogie Nights, uh, big fan of Ricky. Jay, which takes us then into alternate ending corner. There isn't, well, there's what there's some changes from the book, which we're going to talk about now in a few fun facts. So Chung Ling Su was a stage character created by William Ellsworth Robinson, a white man who disguised himself as a Chinese man to cash in on audiences' enthusiasm for the exotic. Robinson lived as Chung, never breaking character while in public. He died in March 1918 when a bullet catch trick went wrong. His his last words and the first English he had spoken on stage in 19 years were, my God, I've been shot. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And somebody went, whoa, 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 whoa. Get an ambulance, get an ambulance, get an ambulance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're what? And then he died. <laughs> uh, the editing includes 146 jump time jump cuts, meaning like the next shot is um, a skip back or a jump to a different period or timeline, uh, which is like almost unheard of. So Sam Mendes wanted to do this. Oh, it's based off a book. I should have said this earlier. Sam Mendes wanted to do this as his follow-up to American Beauty. Um, and then it uh, fell through. Um, and then uh, Mendes still had... Um, I, I did the fair. And so passed on uh, Nolan's name um, as a, after a fan of following a memento. Mm. Will, the cast includes two Oscar nominees. Who are they? Oh, um, 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 nominees. Um, nominees. Nominees. Well, technically. Two, win two, one, winners, no. two winners and two nominees. <laughs> Who are the winners? Michael Caine. Yeah. Um, did, did Scarlett win for Marriage Story? No. no. She lost to... Oh. Um, 
Hi, oh, my Chris, name's Judy Chris, Garland. Uh, Chris uh, Bale. Christian Bale won for The Fighter. Uh, and the two Oscar nominees? Surely Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman and Scarlett Johansson, yes. Um, I can't remember what Hugh Jackman was nominated for. Either. David Bowie Australia. initially... Sorry? Australia. Oh, no. David Bowie initially declined the role of Nikola Tesla when it was offered to him. Christopher Nolan flew out to him personally to tell him that he was the only person he imagined for the role and that his larger-than-life persona would make the idea of Tesla building a cloning device believable. Upon hearing this, Bowie changed his mind and took the role. Oh, very good. I like you, David. Uh, it is hinted <laughs> at in this movie and confirmed in the novel that the twins are named Albert and Frederick, hence Alfred Borden. Sarah's line, I know what you are, was not in the script. Rebecca Hall said that she felt terrible right after she said it, thinking she had given away the ending. I mean, they could have not used it. There's no... <laughs> uh, in the novel, the machine works a bit differently than in the film. So it doesn't copy a person exactly as they are, memories and personality intact, 50 to 100 feet away, as it does in this. Instead, it does in fact transport the essence of the person into a newly created body, leaving behind a seemingly dead husk. So like the, the, the person left behind is like, uh, yeah. they, they don't know anything. And, yeah, which uh, I think they, I guess in this, I don't know um, if uh, the, the bodies are in that novel then. No. How would we? How would we know that they're a, a dead husk if they're just falling straight into the jar into the jugs of water? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. In the novel, uh, the Borden twin who sneaks under the stage is not framed by an. Oh, there we go. And does in fact wreck the transported man trick. His interference creates two angiers, one sickly at having had half his essence taken out of him, the other a wraith-like being who can only be somewhat solid through intense concentration. So like a ghost. Don't like that. No. We do not need ghosts in this movie as well. Um, but I believe that was Sam Mendes's, he, Sam Mendes wanted it to be exactly like the novel. Oh. And Bernard Fallon is an anagram of Alfred Borden, which is probably oh, why right. we, we never know that his name's Bernard. <laughs> Which take uh, uh, tagline rundown a friendship that became a rivalry, a rivalry that turned deadly. Fine, and you can guess the other one. Um, Abracadabra. Bad guess. Are you watching closely? <laughs> no, I like that's a good one. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. That's yeah. Fine. We've this is yeah tagline rundown. I'm going to keep going because there are great taglines out there. But I've been pretty disappointed with the loss of them. There are there are only so many Scary Movie 3 great trilogies come in threes. And um, there are only so many great taglines out there. Um, which takes us into Tom's big question. So did both pe did both Christian Bales write the Christian Bale journal? Uh no. The they, entire they have... journal was just as a trick for Hugh Jackman. Must have been because it's all in the same hand. Yeah. Um, so they must have they they probably discussed it together and one person scribed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Would I, oh yeah, sorry, go on. I'd, I'd imagine. Yeah, it, it would. It, the sort of people would just do it as a whole. Would Tes so Tesla's piece of advice is destroy it. Wouldn't shouldn't he just destroy it and give back the money? Because he spent so much money. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What, what, does, oh, go on. what does Michael do with it? He does destroy it. Or he, he must destroy it. He must. Yeah. He must destroy it. I mean, drop it at the bottom of the ocean, or yeah. sell it. Maybe I don't know. And then move to Italy and go grab a cappuccino. <laughs> um, so. 100 shows they were going to kill they were going to get 100 identical cages drown 100 Hugh Jackmans 
and then what? Just spend a year getting rid of them all? Yeah. Or was the plan always to just then burn the theatre down again? Maybe, but what? Oh, Michael Caine really doesn't. Good. Michael Caine doesn't destroy it. Michael Caine, um, the thing. It's in the fire. It's in the theatre. Yes, the it's in, yeah, yeah. yes. Um, water. Yes, no. Water doesn't. Well, no. Back to physics with rather than like. No, because the heat would break the glass eventually, and then all the bodies would like. And then, and then he has put out the fire. <laughs> um, um, yeah, the they didn't really discuss their cleanup plan, did they? No, it's terrible. No. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense at all. It's a great final image, but it's so stupid. Um, I love the just like throwaway shot where Michael Caine kidnaps the little girl when she's just playing with her toy, and he goes "hello," and then we just like cut away because <laughs> obviously he has to kidnap her. Uh, to get her back for Christian Bale. Is now Michael Caine uh, uh, on the run for kidnapping a child? <laughs> There's no way a hundred shows. Uh, and is this the better Christopher Nolan movie that ends with Christian Bale nodding at Michael Caine and Michael Caine nodding back? Um, I don't know. I, I, I want them to have a chat in in rises i know he says i i had the same dream and i <laughs> and i see you and what you don't we don't say anything we just nod but surely if you're actually in that scenario you would go you're like bro you're alive <laughs> <laughs> no because they're in no because you should use your real name robin <laughs> and that's that over there wait that's, no, that, that's, that's batman <laughs> god's <laughs> batman Bloody hell, it's Batman. What you you can do better. You can do better than her. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, Basta. I will not marry. I will not marry. Another wine. Um, that's it for the prestige. Next up, we've finally Ruby. got to your um, a ruby, the size of a tangerine. A tangerine, the size of a tangerine. Um we finally get to your fortnight, Will. And what is your fortnight? Is my fortnight Ardman? You, you're asking me. Uh, I think my, I think it is. My fortnight is Ardman. So it's a celebration of all of the Wallace and Gromits. Mm. And uh, what else have we got? We've got Flushed Away. In Flushed there. Away, Pirates and Curse the Weir of it. Oh, We've got excellent. our first week uh, starting Thursday the 30th of June and a bonus episode on Saturday the 2nd will be Flushed Away and Pirates. And then we've got a whole week of Wallace and Gromit. Excellent. Bring your um, cheese. Bring your cheese. Bring, smell my smell cheese. Smell my cheese. Bring, bring your cheese. Dabba, 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 dabba.